Hi, good afternoon. It's Jim from the Mavstar Observatory. Um, we're going to talk about uh, NASA's recent release uh, with regards to changes that they've discovered in the South Atlantic anomaly. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with what that is, it's one of the weakest regions of uh, magnetic intensity on our planet. And I'll show you uh, this year's um, you know, magnetic uh, in, uh, updated model. Um, we'll just go into it a little bit more detail. Um, but before we do, a uh, huge thanks to a few people, uh, and I think they deserve to be mentioned. Uh, Bob, Kathy, Jen, uh, Doug, you know, thank you for your constant support uh, that you've given the observatory over a, a very long time now. And it's people like you, as well as a few others, I'll just quickly mention Brian, uh, Susan, um, in California and everybody else our subscribers you know it is amazing that a lot of you have stuck with us um, through the course of time and you know occasionally it is you know just worth the extra uh, mention uh, to you guys because without you we simply wouldn't be doing or be where we are right now and um, you know with that um, we'll get on to discuss what NASA's talking about then. They reckon that the South Atlantic anomaly is splitting. Um, they're talking, they describe it as a dent in the Earth's magnetic field and believe that really, um, you know, the weakened region of our planet, which is the South Atlantic anomaly, um, is only responsible for damaging satellites. And, you know, this is something we're going to find out whether that is the case because it won't be long. I do believe. It won't be long before we do get um, one of our magnetometers into South America. Um, it's just a matter of time. And when we do, it's not just the magnetometer we're going to put there. It's also the muon detector. And, you know, when we get those two pieces of equipment in that region, we will know for sure uh, what the risks are on, on the ground in a region where the magnetic intensity is at its weakest. We have... Um, in Perth, Australia, and if you saw the Global Health um, at a glance page that we've recently put up on our website, you will see that in Perth, Australia, we are um, detecting, uh, you know, less muons in that region than what we are here in the UK. And the reason that I believe is for that is because of the high intensity which is now moving up over that continent of Australia. So when we get one of our muon detectors into Brazil, I do expect to see higher numbers, much higher numbers, first of all, than Perth, and second of all, more than the UK, because we're talking of a region which probably only has a, a magnetic intensity of about 20 microteslas, or perhaps not, just, not, not too much more than that. And this is one of the regions of our Earth which is actually increasing in size. Um, and now, according to NASA, they believe it's splitting in two. So let's just have a look on the uh, updated ma magnetic model uh, that was released by NASA. And I'll show you those, that region where they believe it's starting to split. So we can see the region which NASA uh, claimed to be splitting off uh, on this magnetic intensity map. Now if we just go over to the other map, you'll see um, why they believe that is the case. So just go on to this one. Uh, what we can see here, if we was to call them, I suppose, isobars or magnetic isobars, uh, we can see another region forming on its own here within the uh, South Atlantic anomaly. And this is stemming over towards Africa, which you see a little bit clearer on the uh, other map here, just at the south of the continent of Africa. Um, but I think there's another interesting region uh, that NASA haven't even mentioned on, on the... Uh, you know in their release and I've not heard them talk about this region of the earth and I think it's interesting and the region we're talking about is this one here uh, just here because what we've got is almost a pinch taking place of high intensities from the north and the south merging around the equatorial region uh, in this region here where I've put this black circle and the reason why I think this is important is because uh, it is actually squashing the South Atlantic anomaly that almost wraps the entire circumference of the Earth. And the reason why we've got this pinch taking place is because the magnetic North Pole is moving south and 
the safe magnetic north uh, sorry the safe magnetic pole is moving towards north and it is these two uh, poles that are creating this pinch in the safe atlantic anomaly if it wasn't for the case of these poles merging towards each other now or these high intensities moving towards each other the safe atlantic anomaly would wrap its uh, self entirely all around the, uh, the circumference of the earth but NASA don't talk about this and I find this a real interesting area uh, because we're going to see at some point I believe uh, the two north and south poles merge uh, in this region what happens from there on out is you know anyone's best guess but you know it, it is strange that you know uh, coming from NASA is is um, you know to say the least uh, a little um, very little information I mean they haven't uh, mentioned this high intensity region and for that fact it being high intensity that it has stole the magnetic north pole from Canada which is weakening um, so very interesting times ahead guys and you know like I said uh, NASA are, are mainly concerned about the fact that it only affects satellites well it actually can um, affect older aircraft that didn't I believe have the update uh, on their avionics uh, because you know sometimes um, some aircraft used to get uh, CCU strikes which is cosmic rays hitting the CPU in some of the avionics and causing it to freeze well they overcome this with a new system that you know uh, it will either flick from one to the other very quickly if it notices a, a freeze in the avionics um, but you know there was um, a couple of years ago uh, a frightening incident that took place as a, as a re uh, result of the avionics being hit by a CP, uh, you know by cosmic rays um, so it's not just satellites that are affected by these things it's actually you know it can be aircraft it can be computers on the ground but we want to know more to the point how much radiation is inbound on a weakened region because at some point when the poles do go for a reversal the magnetosphere is going to collapse and by studying i reckon the safe atlantic anomaly with muon detectors and uh, magnetometers we can get an idea of what to expect during that period of time we already know that an increase of cosmic radiation is inbound in our in through our atmosphere as a result of the uh, low solar output caused by the grand solar minimum uh, which has shrunken the heliosphere and we also know that we're about 20 percent down on the total magnetosphere strength at this point in time and as time goes on from this point it is only going to start to weaken and weaken further and you know we know what the results and causes of that will be increasing cancers increasing cardiac arrhythmias and failure and you know it not just poses a risk to human beings but every biodiversity on the planet so it's really important i think um that you know there is a, a deeper study into this uh, anomaly that's taking place and not just for the fact that you know the last time the earth went through a completed reversal it was 780,000 years ago um, but you know for the fact that it's also uh, gone through some excursions I believe the last one off the top of my head was around about 12,000 years ago so you know one thing for sure is is that you know at this observatory we probably do a little uh, more than what we should in terms of resolution by recording every three seconds but at least you know there will be a log of this magnetic reversal and you know there will be um, every three second intervals you know data collected and archived um, during this reversal so you know that's our little part that we're playing here and obviously keeping you informed of the changes and and, and the changes that also happen with regards to our jet streams becoming laden with more water vapor as a result of cloud seeding through um, you know ec extra amounts of cosmic radiation coming through uh, so there you go guys in a nutshell um, so big thanks to those that have supported the observatory if you want to join them there's a link down there you can support us on PayPal and if that's not for you there's a PayPal link uh, you can use that as well but the main thing is is that we keep this observatory publicly funded and in 
doing that, you know, the information that we gather, we give straight to you, and it's not uh, dictated to us by these organisations that probably would um, sponsor us uh, what we can and can't say. So it's great that we keep it, you know, publicly funded. And, you know, it would be great if we could just step it up a little notch as well, because, you know, uh, it's, it's not that our observatory is a charity, uh, but I'm sure you're aware that during this outbreak that we're in at the moment, um, you know, charities are suffering. And, you know, I suppose anyone that receives donations for anything, I've noticed uh, that, you know, during this pandemic outbreak, their funding has dropped as well. And, you know, same as ours. Uh, so, yeah, big thanks to all those that support us. And if you're thinking about doing that, now's a great time. And there is always worse things you can do than support an observatory covering one of the main anomalies that affects human beings in this day and age. So with that, guys, I'm just going to say nothing else than have a great day. Take care of your loved ones. And as always, bye for now.